Congrats to, to Paul and Stanford, obviously, on a phenomenal season, and uh, we look forward to having them in our conference um, as soon as uh, next year. It um, uh, feels great, you know, and uh, it's so fitting. I came in, and there were no players sitting at the table, and so I looked at, at, at the signs to see the names, and um, to see these two names, um, whoever made that choice, you're, you're a smart uh, woman or man, um, because... These two women um, are, are phenomenal in so many ways. And uh, any team that's ever going to be good um, is owned and run and led by players. Um, players who have courage, um, players who are intelligent, um, players who are willing to act. And um, these two, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm a lucky guy um, to have them in my life. And, uh, we're just elated right now. Um, as I just told the whole team, this is their team, right? They were both here in 2021. They have national championships under their belt, right? Um, but it's but it's but it's different now, right? Um, they were part of that team. Now they own this team, and uh, and others with them. So um, we're we are elated to be national champions. Questions, front row. Yeah, for both of you, you know, um, Stanford had not given up multiple goals in the game all season, you know, five is the most since 2000 against them. What do you guys just do to, you know, do that on the scoreboard today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I feel like I do know. I, we, we have a great team, and I, I'm so happy with how we performed tonight. And I think that just for us to prove that we not only win a national championship, but we win it like this. Like Brian said, Stanford's a great team. And... We just show that we're like a little bit greater. Um, and I think that what we did, it really fits our team. Our backline is insane. Our goalkeeper is insane. Everyone that performs on this team is incredible. Um, what we do, that we manage to score five goals, I'm not shocked. Uh, but I think that maybe it proves a point that we are that good. And also, props to Brian, what he's built here. We're very confident in what we do. Uh, as a team, we didn't go into this game wondering what we were going to do and how we were going to score and how we were going to perform. We knew that, and we did it. So I think everyone performed 100% today. Oh, they you know, in that post-game, that breakdown there, you know, talking about holding the trophy and saying we're the best offense and the best defense in the country. I mean, how, how good does it feel to say that you guys have the right to, to say that you guys have the best, just with those two guys? <laughs> yeah, definitely a little bit of troll in there, but, um, <laughs> but no, definitely just to... <laughs> <laughs> I almost laughed. Oh, man. <laughs> no, definitely. Um, like Bianca said, um, I feel like at, like for as, as good of a team as we are, we're a very humble team. Um, we play for each other. Um, you know, I like to, you know, a quote Brian said about keeping the main thing the main thing, and we just go out there and we play ball because we love it. We also love each other, um, and that's what makes this team so, so incredible. It's like, obviously, talent. Um, can get you so far, but 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 playing your heart out for the people who who, who are in your locker room and you, you and, and you go to war with every day and for every day, um, nothing beats that, and, and and that's why you have results like that because you got a team that's <laughs> that's gonna fight through it all, you know, through the good and the bad, and we've been resilient this entire season, and sometimes it's looked like, dang, are we even gonna get there? But we've we've persevered, um, and we've we've been unconquered. <laughs> that is, that is, that is, that is, yeah, that's that's good. Good. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Third row. Hey, Leilani, when I spoke with you yesterday, you said you guys had to play Florida State soccer in order to win this game tonight. To show the nation what Florida State soccer is all about, what it looks like, I mean, that's it. I mean, to, to show everybody that, how much does that mean to you? It means everything, you know, I, I, and hopefully the little girls who are at home 
watching this national championship game, they are thinking to themselves, like, mom and dad, I want to play for that team because I want to play in games like that. Um, and if they don't know already, we're obviously a great program and have been a consistently great program over time, but we're a family here, man, and we love each other. And obviously, you know, what Brian's been able to do and, and the coaching staff he's been able to bring in, you've got people here who genuinely care about you from – from your trainers to your strength and conditioning people to people who do nutrition to the people who are doing our analytics to our film people. Like, everyone cares about you and, and, and wants what's best for you, and everyone works their butts off for this game, you know? And it, it definitely shows because the amount of love and compassion and care that goes into what's built here, it's, it's second to none, man. Third row. Uh, well, congratulations, Coach, for you too. Congrats. Um, when you look at this team, You've got freshman All-American. You've got sophomores and juniors banging in goals and, and playing defense. You've got seniors who have been here before and, and are accomplishing it. When you look at this whole team, is this kind of like a coach's dream? You've just got contributors from every different angle. Oh, you said kind of like a coach's <laughs> dream. <laughs> uh, delete two words. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny. It's normal coach feeling, right, game day. Um, your opponent, um, nerves, anxiety, right? Thinking different things. Honestly, I, every game, start game day, start of games, throughout games, I was not feeling any of those things. And it just comes down to, to talent and leadership, right? And belief and determination, all, a combination of all those things. So it le <laughs> honestly, it left me incredibly relaxed, right? In a way that I've never felt before as a coach, right? And here we are, we're playing in the national championship tonight against Stanford, who Stanford hadn't lost 10 games back into last year, 40 some odd games, but we weren't nervous. And that's no disrespect to Stanford because they are phenomenal. It's all credit to these players. So coach's dream. <laughs> Just a reminder, questions for the student-athletes at this point. Coach will be in a moment. Uh, we've got a question on Zoom from Melvin. All right, thank you very much. Uh, congratulations, Leilani and uh, Biana. Um, you guys have a couple things in common. Obviously, now you're champions again. You have that in common. But you also have in common that you um, switched positions. Um, you, you're both playing a different position now than you played um, during the season and earlier in your career at Florida State. Could you talk a little bit about how important it is that you guys and the rest of your teammates are willing to sacrifice for the team and play wherever you're needed in order to uh, get uh, victories? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, this goes back to just uh, what this program has built over the years, um, wanting to be a professional, um, wanting to be held to high standards, and sometimes you have to play different roles in, like, in order to help your team win. And, you know, credit to everyone, you know, on the field and on the bench and, and the people who, who go to train every single day. Like, you have a selfless group who, who just care about the winning, who care about winning games like this and care, and care about being champions. So whatever kind of has to be done in order to help the team, I feel like every single person on this team is willing to do so. I would also add on that. I think that uh, no one comes to Florida State knowing exactly what they will be or what they will become. I think everyone comes here with an open mind and a belief in that the coaching staff will make them into what they are. Lauren Flynn, defender of the tournament or whatever you call it, um, extraordinary, but she was forward when she got to FSU uh, and got changed into a center back and now she's best in the nation. So I think that everyone, like not just me and Leilani, but everyone here have that mindset and the open mindset that Leilani said, I think. Everything we do is for the team and it, it adds a lot to when you leave this place as well. For a what does it mean for you guys to do this in undefeated fashion? Something this program's never done before. That's incredible. Yeah. Like when you put it into perspective, you know, that's incredible. And I feel like looking from the outside in, everyone who's watching, they're like, dang, they just won a national championship game 5 1. It must be easy. Like that is the furthest thing from the truth. I don't think the scoreline really represents like how incredible the program Stanford is. Like nobody gets here by luck. Nobody gets here, you know, I don't know. But like to, to play at this level, um, it is surely not easy to win one game is not easy, let alone what, how many? I don't know how many. And then to obviously come in and win this game and go undefeated and, you know, 
had a had a had a perfect season, you know, winning the regular season, winning the ACC championship, and then to to finish it off finish it off three for three like this, um, it's unheard of. But just obviously, um, just big uh, shout out to everyone who puts who puts their time in and who cares about this program from the players to the staff. So. Difficult for you guys from that multiple pop stroke, you know, they started counting on ten to the graffiti, you know, hugging each other. What was that moment like? What was going through your mind when you just like, you know, out there celebrating in jubilation, you know? I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I like saw I saw it was a minute left and I was like, I don't think you can score four goals in a minute. So <laughs> I started <laughs> No, but <laughs> so there was a lot of thoughts at that moment. Starts counting down. I don't know where the ball it was. A goalkeeper, someone. Uh, I think I ran the other way. Eventually, like there was ten seconds left. I just wanted to celebrate. It was amazing. It was yeah. Amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. Unforgettable experience yeah. for sure. Middle. Um, for Biada and Leon, you know, Ryan is the first head credit Mark Corey in the building of owners. You guys have been here through the transition. You know, you've seen it come to the top now. You know, how is this? I actually think that's a great question, and I think that Brian is a little too humble in this because <laughs> he always credits Mark, as should, because this is a great program and it has been. Um, but there's a lot of people that go into this program, and there has to be the right coach. You can't just leave a legacy like Mark left um, to anyone. And the way Brian stepped up in here, I like. There was absolutely a transition period, which I think very short on last year. I think we could have made it this far last year if we would have had a little more time. Uh, we didn't have that time, I don't think, but what we built on here and how we got here, I think it's such a credit to Brian, and he will not say it, but it is, and he will continue to be this program. It has changed a little. Um, I think it's in a good way. I think all things like change over time. Um, as a player, I feel very confident that this program will continue to be great. I totally agree with that. I think this program is in tremendous hands. You know, we talked about freshmen, sophomores, and then to have, you know, some more years under a great coach like this, under a great coaching staff, who once again care about you as players before anything else. It is, is it, it's incredible. And obviously, to be in the position he was two years ago, and you know, there's an opening to coach one of the best programs in the country. Like that takes some guts, man. Takes some gumption, as he would say. Um, and to step up the way he did, um, and come and just. Be him, and you know we, we kind of talk about you know at Florida State being us and playing like us. He came in and and, and he was himself, and 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 we gravitated towards it. He gravitated towards us, um, and it's shown. And yeah, don't be humble. You're a great coach, yeah. man. You're amazing. Man. <laughs> we have time for a couple more. Yeah, I just want to ask. It. Obviously, the first 25 minutes really tight, and then. Jordan gets that penalty and see a freshman just so calmly get up there and take that and then to be followed up less than 30 seconds later by Cody's goal. Can you talk me through that uh, that sequence and kind of what that did for the team? That girl is incredible. <laughs> that girl is incredible. Like, her work ethic, like you guys obviously don't see what she, how she practices every day, but that girl is incredible and just a all-round really just amazing kid who cares about her craft, who cares about the people around her. Obviously she's a little shy, but she's slowly breaking out of her shell and it's been it's been literally amazing to watch her progress, watch her grow. I'm so excited. I wish I was staying for a couple of years just so I could play with these freshmen and these sophomores maybe because they they are incredible really. But all season she's stepped up in a way that I've never seen before. It is shocking. It's phenomenal and no, she is she that girl. <laughs> yeah, I think it says a lot about her. Like, we have other players that can take a penalty like that. Like, there's nil-nil in a final like that. I know Leilani could have taken that penalty. Oh, she was almost taking it. But, like, for her to get the penalty and take it, and we all, like, we don't want to run, like, you get what I mean? Like, she, we would know that she would score. We, yeah, we have full confidence in her, and she has full confidence in herself, as Leilani said. Incredible. And then JB does that goal. That was kind of incredible, too. Touch. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But what, what's amazing, it wasn't, what doesn't get talked about a whole lot relative to Jordan. Uh, my first summer here, I got a text from Brooke, our women's basketball coach. At an a, she was at an AAU tournament. She said, is Jordan Dudley really coming to FSU for soccer? Because I'm watching her play basketball right now, and she is tearing it up. Right? So she has, her whole life, spent 50% of her years playing 
of, of a calendar year playing basketball, 50% playing soccer. So this is the first time in her life she is fully committed to soccer. And uh, so when you talk about potential, it's, it's, it's pretty high. So one more, right? Um, congratulations. Uh, you are two of, I counted seven, um, international players on this team. And I'm wondering if you could sort of talk about how those various experiences sort of add to the, the tapestry of this program and what it's been like to adjust and learn about the ways that different cultures influence playing styles and how it all kind of fits together into this cha championship winning team. Yeah, it was a good question. Uh, I think, uh, like, I, I would say that our international people add a lot to this program and like I don't know if that sounds weird coming from an international but I like I think that we add diversity that is maybe not always seen because we most of us come from playing with like 30 year old women before like we don't play with 16 year olds like the people do over here we have a different type of playing style especially in Europe um, they long spend time in England like we do things a little different and you have to go through a different type of period so coming here I think we're more mature both in the playing style and like being far from home, uh, all of those things. And I think that that takes this program in the right direction. I think that we set a standard in ways, not only like, oh, we score a lot of goals. Like, that's not maybe the standard I'm talking about. I'm talking about the standard where we know we have to do the right things because the things we sacrifice to get here, we don't take that lightly. And the things we know that we have to fight for. When we were younger, when you're like 14 on a team and there's a 26-year-old girl, girl that's like, shooting you out the sideline because she thought you did something bad. Like, you learn stuff from that. And I think that us taking that in here, knowing how to treat younger people and how to make people grow, even though we're not that old ourselves, I think that makes this program, like, a little extra special compared to many others. Uh, and I think it's a good question because it probably goes unnoticed. I think the internationals make a huge difference, and it's so cool to, you know, See how different players, you know, you got Maria doing little things and how she gets their her little things. And you got Beata, who's just an absolute dog, you know. And it's just like all these players from all these different backgrounds and cultures and just how their upbringings affected how they got to here. And it's, it's, it's just a really wholesome, unified, just big storyline. And it just, it, it, it all goes hand to hand. And it's just incredible to see, like, where people add their little, add their little things. And it just creates this beautiful style of soccer that, that you, that you can't find a lot of places. Well, Leilani and Beata, thank you so much. You're a thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. You know, this, this team, and, and we haven't spoken like this at all um, because as, as these guys said, and as Leilani just said, we've kept the main thing the main thing. And we just focus, what, what do we need to do to win the next game? And um, however, the season's over. And um, I, don't, I don't know if we won 22 games or 23 games. I don't know. <laughs> 22. 22 0 and 1, and scored a lot of goals, right? I think the highest ranked offense in the country. Um, and, you know, Pretty good defending as well. And um, like you said earlier, and I told the team this after our Duke game, we played at Duke, um, still with one more ACC game to play. Um, we scored the most goals in ACC play in the history of the program, right? We now just won regular season, um, ACC tournament, and then the national championship. The 2014 did, team did the same thing, right? We obviously did this in undefeated fashion. And I told the team after after that Duke game, first ever's, when you do a first ever within a program, it's really special, right? And it's and it's hard. At Florida State, it's nearly freaking impossible, right, <laughs> to do a first ever, right? But this group has done a collection of first ever's, right, in terms of goals scored in the league, in terms of now undefeated, undefeated regular season already, and now undefeated to go going through the whole season with, without a loss, and, and there are going to be many more as we kind of comb through statistics. So, um, and as I, you know, answered the earlier question about, you know, we have coaches in this room, we have ex-coaches in this room. They know the game day anxiety of a coach, right? It is horrible, okay? It is a horrible feeling throughout the day. And I 
I will, I have woken up a happy guy on game days because uh, of the confidence in these players. Um, you know, the time, talk to you a lot about the defense this season. Mm -hmm. Because Doug, you know, playing with Chip and Kilbert, talk about the moment that you shared down there with Warren. Like, you know, just the award she got as the defensive player. You know, you talk so much about her, the impact she's had, just hugging her. And what did what did that moment? Yeah, amazing. I mean, I, I I met Lauren when she was, I think, 12 years old. Her older sister played for me at, at Tennessee, so I've known the family for a long time. And she was really connected, you know, to the old coaching staff. And they were the ones, she was a winger, and they turned her in a, into a center back, right? And watching the 2021 National Championship against BYU, she was my, because I was sitting on my couch watching the game, she was my, and it wasn't tainted because I, I like her so much, and the family, she was my most valuable player, because BYU had a very potent attack, and she was phenomenal in her defending, phenomenal. And then she was in with the national team, and, and that was all based on what the old coaching staff had, had helped her get to, and now they leave, right? And now in comes a new coach, and it's been hard for her. Right? It's been hard because those were her guys, you know, despite the history we have with her family. And uh, last year was kind of rough for her, right? And even the start of this year was kind of rough for her. But we had some real good heart-to-hearts, and we brought Elisa, our strength coach, in, and Allure, our, our, our athletic trainer, and just told her how much we love her and how, how we're here for her, and we believe in her, and changed a couple things about where she's playing. We, we moved her from the right side center back back to the left center back where she was in 2021, in spring of 2021. And uh, and then she kind of started to gain some confidence that she had, hasn't had in the last year and a half, um, both as a player but then also as a human and within our team. She she started to become authentic Lauren Flynn again. So, so as much as I talk about these two and their leadership within our team, authentic Lauren started to – started to really lead our team. She was smiling more. She was more comfortable in her own skin. Just a happy kid and being her, right? And, and we have a little ritual now pregame that she started around the Notre Dame game when we circle up right before the game. I can't tell you what she says because it's a bit of potty mouth, okay? <laughs> but it's a freaking beautiful thing, right? And it gets our team so excited because they all love Lauren Flynn. And so... For it to culminate in the way our defend, our team defending had gone the last 15 games and then her to receive this honor, um, special special deal for her. And, and really cool because success isn't always like that, right? You can go here and then you can fall down. And tough times, tough deals, but are you strong enough to come out of it? And that's, that's what makes this special for her. For everyone, yeah. I mean, um, obviously, 28 gets um, no score. Jordan Dudley goes up there. Seeks that you know free kick and a penalty kick, um, but for a freshman in that moment, just to step up and hit that you know with ease, didn't look comfortable. You look very comfortable with her, you know. Totally, and 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 what makes it even more impressive is that two weeks ago against Texas, right, she stepped up and took a penalty, right, and so therefore they've seen Jordan Dudley <clears throat> take a penalty. They know where she went in, on her prior penalty, right, and she didn't change the side she went to. Right? She just went there again because of the unequivocal confidence with which she plays. It, it felt like the turning point of that game was right after Stanford scored their goal because um, you guys pretty much controlled the first half, came out of the second half. It felt like a little bit like it was slow out of the second half. They score, and now you think, okay, they're back. Talk to me about the moments after that goal because it seemed like that just jolted you guys to life. Totally. Once again, and what makes this sport so special is we don't have timeouts. Right? And so coaches can't solve this, right? A timeout can't solve this, right? They've got to solve it, right? And so once again, back to my confidence on game days, I know these guys got it, right? Because they're talented, because they believe, and they're so determined, right? And, and I hated it in that moment. All of a sudden, the score's 2-1, right? Terrible feeling. However, I love it because exactly what you're talking about, their response, right? And then I don't know the exact minutes, right? Uh, they scored in the 51st, 52nd minute, and then by the 61st minute, 10 minutes later, the game's over. It's 4-1, to right? And all credit to them. They were not going to be, as cheesy as this might sound, it's true in this case, they were not going to be denied. We have a question from Zoom. Uh, Melvin, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much. 
Uh, Coach, congratulations. Thank uh, you, Melvin. Special moment. Great game. Uh, I want to take you back to another game, though. On October 19th, first game against Pitt, the last time you guys were ever behind in a game, uh, you came back. After being down no, and I think that might have been the only time this season we were down in the game. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> from that, coming back from that, that um, that stayed with you throughout the year about this team because it seemed like that's when the light really came on for you guys, and you never looked back. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, coming into this weekend, uh, what, what was scored at halftime on Friday? I don't even remember uh, the Clemson game. Anybody? Help me out here. One nothing. One nothing. Okay, cool. So 12 of our 25 games, we were tied or behind, only one time, um, at halftime, right? And so um, we came out of the gate, and in that game you're referring to the pit game, we scored three goals in 12 minutes, in a 12-minute span in the second half, and they got a penalty late, and we won the game 3-2. to two. Um, But... We are, we, we're an incredibly resilient group, and, and I told them that after the game. And uh, so we, and we knew Pitt in that game was at that point, we felt like the best team we played all season, right? And I told our team afterwards, yeah, they don't have Carolina to their name or Virginia to their name or Duke to their name, Notre Dame to their name, but they're a really, really good team. And that's why we had to play them two more times, right? Because they got to the ACC semifinal, and then they got to the Elite Eight. Uh, back row. Yeah, so a bit of a tactical question for you here. Most finals are usually cagey affairs, but you guys came out and pressed and counter-pressed really aggressively right away. Is that influenced by some of what you saw with the BYU game, or is it just that's our identity, we're not changing it for any reason? Great question. Um, it is our identity. Um, but we also know Stanford is a program that forever loves to have the ball, right? They are at their best when they're pinging it around and in a rhythm and making you chase. And we didn't want to chase. And we wanted to make the game fast and, and make them play at a speed at which they were uncomfortable, right? And so we were relentless in that pressing. And, uh, and what, what was tricky about it is they're so good. Right? And a lot of teams play Stanford in a two front, right? So that they can get in the face of those center backs. But we don't play it in a two front. So we had to, we actually had three different ways in which we could press throughout the game. So you go back to the question. First of all, I'm gonna steal your word tapestry. Great word. Uh, she stole my word gumption. I'm stealing your word tapestry. Okay? Right? Beautiful. Um, so to that question about the internationals, right? They 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 are so intelligent, right? They grew up in countries where all they see are people playing in the street, people on games on TV. They don't have American football. They don't have baseball. They don't have basketball. All they watch is the game. So they are incredibly intelligent. So last night when <clears throat> we tell them, these are the three ways in which we're going to press based on the cues, based on what their back line looks like, based on what their defensive center midfielders look like, and they're like, okay, we got it. No problem, right? <laughs> Very, very intelligent. And so we're able to roll it out and do it, and um, I think did pretty well with it. Time for one more. You were hired in April of last year, obviously in weird circumstances, and handed a great program. You had tremendous players to stay. They stuck with you for the most part. You now put a fourth star on your chest. What does it mean for you for program to be here? For what Leighton said about you, just everything that's transpired since the day you arrived at FSU. Yeah, well, um, you know, pretty cool that. Uh, Jim Curry um, made the trip um, from Dallas to watch this game and obviously sitting next to Michael Alford and the two gentlemen that <clears throat> gave me this opportunity, right? And so uh, forever thankful and grateful for, for, for that, right? And then, and then yeah, we, we had, when I got here, we had nine players who were not in the transfer portal, right? So if we had to roll the ball out the next day, we, we'd be down two men, um, two women. Um, so we had to commit some, and you're right, um, some, some, you know, transferred, some went pro, um, but we got, we got 20. We got 20 together last year, and uh, we had a pretty good year, right? Won the regular season and won, won the ACC tournament and got to the College Cup. And losing in the College Cup last year hurt so much, but again, it led to the determination of this group to not be denied. And like I said, this, they, they were a part of the championship two years ago, but it was their team. And so <clears throat> it, it is, you know, you said the fourth star, 
right? Um, you get here and you see the logo, three stars, right? And everybody around the building talks about, well, when we get the four star, what's it gonna look like and what are we doing that? And I'm, and I'm sitting there thinking, should we just talk about practice today, right? <laughs> you know, so to, to have the four star is, uh, it's, it's priceless. Well, Coach, thank you for your time. Thank you. Congratulations both on the championship and a fantastic haircut. <laughs>